What's up? It's your girl, Shay Noor. I'm chilling at the real home of hip hop with Mike Powers. What's poppin' is your boy, Mike Powers. What's poppin' is your boy, Mike Powers. Only one thing left to say. You can say it with me. Hit the lights! For my real hip hop heads only. My next guest is what you call a hip hop ambassador in the truest sense of the word. Ambassador. Meaning he spreads the gospel of this art form to the masses as he holds the craft in its highest possible regard. Is he slept on? I'd say if you don't know that he's quite a bit more skilled than your favorite MC, then yes. This Long Island dart spitter is indeed underrated. With a resume that includes collaborations with 38 Spech, Illa G, PMD, Prodigy, Giallo Point, Rex, Raz Cast, and Static Selector, the author of the critically acclaimed Jigonometry steps unafraid into every iteration of lyricism and takes Styles hostage. So what do you give to a man that has everything? A fucking intro from Mike Powers Global. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on the Mike Powers show, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to a man with a skill set so indomitable, it borders on felonious. From the great state of New York, the Teflon John himself, John Jig, is in the building. <laughs> Yeah. Intro King. Thank you, sir. And thank you for joining me on this show. Mm -hmm. We've been talking for actually a long time. I've been following you for a minute. Um, first yeah. question. Um, I know you've been at this for a minute. Mm -hmm. Um, what's it been like to be the second most flyest fat guy in hip hop since I came out? <laughs> you know, um, just to be to be honest with you, just to be in the same conversation. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's all I could ever dream of. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, I could. That's all I could ever dream of is just to be in the same conversation of fat fly niggas. You know what I'm saying? So we you in the building. Yeah, you in the conversation. That's for sure. For sure. Um, <laughs> so you, you you actually first came to my attention a song called uh, Gordon Gartrell. Okay. Um, yeah. I heard that song. I immediately put that on my Fire 5 list. Sunroof open in the Volvo. Nice days bringing light rays like Ronaldo. Keep the long nose similar to Gonzo. Let the sham pop, lamb chops, and cilantro. The pillars of integrity, digital celebrities. You drowned in the misery of your jealousy. Dot com, check the URL. In the booth, I murder mooks. That's the URL. Pussy. Um, okay. Uh, now, the Gordon yeah, Gartrell is something. That. Yeah. If, if you know about Gordon Gartrell, you know. Like some of y'all mm -hmm. out there may not know. If you know, you know. Okay, so it was when Lisa Bonet, she was yeah. she played Denise on the Cosby Show. Mm -hmm. Um, she made this complete bozo shirt for Theo, uh, <laughs> played by the legendary '80s thespian Malcolm Jamal Warner. Right, um, right. And the shirt was a fucking disaster. Yeah. Well, let's. But well, hold up. But hold on. Let's. We gotta yeah. give the earth. We gotta give the backstory though. Okay. So. Theo goes to the mall with his mother and pay and, and and pays and buys a $200 designer Gordon Gartrell shirt. Yeah. yeah. They then bring it home to dad, who's Bill Cosby. And he goes, Oh, he's like, you, you know, he said something about uh no, no, no 14 year old boy should be wearing a $200 shirt unless yeah. he's on stage with his four brothers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. I thought that joke was brilliant. I it, thought it, that was. Was brilliant. Yeah. it was brilliant. It was brilliant. Yeah. So and so then when he said that, then he ended up having to take the shirt back. You know what I'm saying? And then he hires Denise. He hires Denise to make the Bozo shirt for him. <laughs> <laughs> the, Gore, the famous Gordon Gartrell joint. Um, let me ask you this. What's the worst thing that you either mistakenly wore and didn't know it was whack or some wild shit you were forced to wear to school growing up? Um... I would have to probably say like like uh like picture day. You know, remember picture day, oh, your mom yeah. would send you to school. Yeah, yeah. I remember I read that some of the I, I've been scarred from I've been scarred from my my early years because like you know, my mom she always wanted to make because that picture was going 
on the refrigerator. That's that's prime location. You yeah, know? yeah. So so she, you know, on the picture day came, she was sending me to school and like some other some other stuff. You know what I'm saying? That she wanted me to wear. Like like sometimes it would be like the same thing that you get for Easter. You know what I'm saying? Or something like that. <laughs> same thing you have for Easter or whatever. You know we ain't have it like that. So you know what I'm saying? Hey, well then she you might, get you get into like sixth grade, right? Then the other kids are starting to transition and I'm wearing my fly stuff. And now you got to negotiate with your parents because now they want you to wear like a sweater or a tie. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it was it, it gets spooky around those times because you know you want to assert yourself, but then you also don't want to get your ass whooped. So it's just like, <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying? It's a right. tough time right there. <laughs> so listen, you are a CEO. Yeah. And um yeah. the the I, I want to say the leader of your own mm -hmm. movement. What is Monopoly Family? So Monopoly Family is just like a collective of artists that I pretty much that I've had relationships for a long time with and also just have noticed in my path and, and moving around in this industry as somebody as people that have like some of the same qualities that I like to think that I have as far as like, you know, hard work and talent and, you know, just dedication to the craft. You know what I'm saying? That's the number one thing, you know, any everything else we could work on. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But you got to have it in you. You know, if your bars ain't up to par, then we could, you know what I'm saying? We can, we can, that's something you could practice and get better at. You understand what I'm saying? Or, you know, if your beats ain't where they need to be, that's something you could work on and get, but it's, but it's really about the, the mindset, you know, that tunnel vision, you know, like, I'm just not going to give up. You know what I'm saying? That's the number one quality. Like people I said, that's thinking it's about getting, people, that, people that's focused on getting better. You yeah, I mean? exactly. Good, and they got good energy. Yeah. And I'm hip so, to mouth. I'm just getting. It's a couple of people that I'm just not getting hip to. That's on your squad. Mm -hmm. Mouth, yeah. I'm a little bit hip to. I like his style. You know, I yeah, will yeah. <laughs> definitely say that. How heavy is the is the weight on your shoulders uh, when in your mind you're working to make these other artists pop and not just yourself? Well, I mean, it it it, it definitely it's definitely heavier than it was because now because before I was just grinding to get myself there. Yeah. Now it's like, yo, you have to go out there and create a platform for these guys. You understand what I'm saying? So I kind of have to I kind of have to open the door or like or blaze the trail, so to speak. So it's a little bit more pressure. You know what I'm saying? And I, you know, I try to try to just make myself as available and accessible. And I tell them all the time, use me, bro. Like if you need a verse and you think that that's going to get you that look or whatever, or if you need me to send something to somebody and tell them to listen or whatever the case is, you know what I'm saying? Use me and use the resources that we have because the ultimate goal is to have everything in house from artwork to, you know what I'm saying? We got two producers now. So we working on trying to get, um, and shout out to uh, Shining 88 and shout out to Suave. You know what I'm saying? We got those guys as in-house producers now. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, we're working on trying to get like the graphic designers and, you know, different people that do all kinds of stuff. We would like a we would like a, a writer on staff. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that does publications, you know, everything. So, you know, if you got if you got that type of mind, stay holler at me, man. You know what I'm saying? Got you. Um, please explain to my audience, Bill Cosby remix. Because listen, it's so old school inspired, but I feel like I'm at a loss for words just to call it updated, right? What was the idea behind that song and how were you able to get so many MCs on the same page? But go first explain to them what Bill Cosby remix is. Okay, well the Bill, I mean, it's a, so it's a remix of, my, if you follow my catalog, Bill Cosby, the first one is like one of my most popular songs. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, it was on my um, I think 2016, uh, the 51631 EP. Okay, right. This is a song that I have to. This is one of my most popular songs. This is a song that if I do a show, I have to perform that type of deal. You know what I'm saying? And um, I mean, it's basically called Bill Cosby just because that the sample on the record is from um, Fat Albert. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. When we decided to, um, and we, you know, the, for, during the time that I first put that record out, that I first put Bill Cosby out to the time when I was working on, to the time when I was getting ready to put Jigonometry out, um, I felt like there were a lot more fans and a lot more people watching by that time because we're talking about 2016 or 2015 when I recorded it to 2019. I've I've made leaps and bounds since then. So I felt like I needed to reintroduce the music yeah. Yeah. And then also bring in bring in some legends that I respect. You know what I'm saying? 
And um, and I was able to put that together just, you know, b- between me and my manager, just using our relationships, you know what I'm saying? And just reaching out to folks and everybody, you know, they participated, man, it came out dope. You know the what I mean? bars. God yeah. damn. Like it's it's a series of uppercuts. You know, mm-hmm. that's what that's what that song is. Um, but y'all gotta go when y'all get done with this interview, go check that out. Every every song I make mention of, every album I make mention of. If you got a pen, paper, write this shit down. Go mm-hmm. peep out what I'm recommending after this video. If I'm lying about anything, get at me in the comment section. I say this shit for a reason for y'all to go peep it out. Um, the man might be underrated, but it's up to it's up to us to make sure that that's not a long lasting condition. Man should not be as underrated as he is. I just want to say that that's my rant for today. Um, mm-hmm. You remember how how to do too many styles and you got too many rhymes like all in your head it to me it seems like you don't smoke weed <laughs> i do <laughs> you smoke a lot. weed a lot <laughs> you got access to so many different styles that you just i hear songs and it's like yo how is he all the way over here right now and like yo how is he in this boom bap lane right here like how was he back in how's he in 87 and then how's he in 2021? Like all these different, and then so many rhymes, but you smoke on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God bless you, bro. Cause my, I'm losing it. <laughs> well, it's not, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm to be honest with you. I mean, I hear, you know, you're not that I'm thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? Like my wife always tells me that my memory is impeccable. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I remember some, I remember stuff that she'd be like, yo, how do you remember that? You know what I'm saying? Um, And, I just, you know, I guess, I don't know, maybe it's like selective memory. Maybe I remember what's important to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, you know, this, like I said, this hip hop thing has been like, it's like, it's like second nature. You know what I mean? It yeah. really, it's like second nature. I yeah. kind of, it's not really something I just like picked up. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of just kind of always been there. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. yeah. Um, that, I think that could have something to do with it. I think that, um, you know, especially coming up in New York and anybody can attest, like, you know, you always got to make sure you got, you know, a fresh 16, 32, 48, something in your head all the time because because you get tested, you know, you know what I'm saying? Especially like in my high school years and things like that, like you walk into that lobby in, in, in the high school in the morning, like you better be, you know what I'm saying? You walk, walking into the lion's den, somebody want to battle you. you well, listen. Sometimes and I, I I used to battle in the lunchroom too. But listen, that um some of those battles come back to be legendary. Are like you gotta yeah. mind your P's and Q's like Jay Z and DMX had a battle, right? Yeah. So and you know they was just they wasn't the, who they was then, and then later yeah. on they blow up and it's like yo look at this it, footage. It gets it gets talked about all the time. That's what I'm saying. So it's like it's like you always you know especially. I, it wasn't so much when I was, you know, I was younger, but now it's always cameras out and everything. So you got to make sure, like, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you're ready to get busy. At somebody going to put it on tape. If, if John Diggs is seen somewhere battling somebody. Yeah. Somebody pulling out a phone. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I haven't, and I haven't, to be honest with you, I haven't battled in so long. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? And speaking but of Jay-Z, is, and then according to you, from a few yeah. years ago, you did a cut and the chorus was, I will not lose. Remember that joint? Oh, wow. You did that joint. You did that joint. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got to do my research? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was actually, yo, that brings back crazy memory because that was actually like the first um, solo video. No, that's the second solo video that I put out. But the first one I did, I just shot it all. It was all me by myself. That was the first video. And I went back to my old hood, Riverhead, where I grew up. And that basketball court, I don't know if you've seen the video. Yeah, I did. That basketball court we was on, that's the basketball court I grew up on playing ball. You know what I'm saying? Had First fights of all, on that court. Have, you know, I, I, I shot head, headies on that court, everything. You know what I'm saying? You, that, so, that's, of, that's 45 pounds ago for you, first of all. 45 yeah, yeah. pounds ago. <laughs> Max. <laughs> I noticed that. But then the other thing is I noticed in the video, different than what's going on in your videos now. In that video in particular, you got an energy in your face 
Like when you doing the lyrics, when you doing the verse on the, it's like when you when you come off with like your face is like all screwed up and stuff. But now, yeah. the way you present in your videos, you're a little bit more relaxed. Um, what is the yeah. difference in your mind state from then to now? The hunger, the the, the, hung, the hunger then, the hunger then because I was, you know, what I'm saying I was really scrambling at that time. You know, what I'm saying like really trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? And that was just um. That was just a way that was part of me figuring it out. You know what I'm saying? The ramen was part of me figuring it out. I had just put out my first solo project. I didn't know how everybody was gonna take it, the hood was gonna take it because the guy, some of the guys you see me in the video with, they were with that we were a group for a very long time. So this that's is uh, my first what are the four five nine, nine boys? The, the four nine five boys. Four nine five boys. Yeah, so this is me stepping out of that comfort zone because these are my my brothers, my big brothers too. Because I'm I was the youngest one in the crew, so they I've always been in that that uh, that safe zone with them, and you know just having to write one sixteen and have and only having to maybe come up with a hook every now and then. You know, I'm the baby of the crew, so everybody looks out for me. And then all of a sudden, I get to a point where yo, I want more than this local celebrity shit. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm starting to grow and I'm starting to travel and I'm starting to record solo music. And this is me coming back to the hood. Like, yo, look at what I did. You understand what I'm saying? And also what you see is me being actually relieved too, because when I get there, I put, you know, when I get there to film the video, this, you know, it's 30, 30 niggas out there. And that's a lot. You understand what I'm saying? That was a lot for me at that time. So I'm like, damn, like niggas is really supporting me. Like, yeah. you understand what I'm saying? That and it felt good because and it felt good because I didn't know how it was gonna go. I didn't know if they was gonna be like, yo, he's trying to leave. You know what I'm saying? Type. You know what I'm saying? So it went. It that's me pulling up and actually seeing like, damn, like they really do care. They really love me. You had you know that. You saying? had that energy when you when they turned on the camera. You was ready. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and shout out to everybody that pulled up that day. Couple, couple, um, couple people locked up. Couple people ain't here no more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but definitely, but definitely, uh, salute to everybody that pulled up. Or there's a song called "Nights Like This" mm -hmm. on that incredible Jigonometry album. Y'all write that mm -hmm. down. Jigonometry. Listen to the album. Um, you you told me I had to listen to that album. I'm glad you did tell me that because when mm -hmm. I, I probably listened to it like three times since you told me to listen to it. Like I said, a incredible album. Um, so if that song comes out in 2004, mm -hmm. that's a top 20 billboard hip hop hit. Mm, yeah, it, it, it is. How is it that you're able to access so many different auras? See, because y'all don't know what I'm talking about. If y'all watching this, if you haven't heard the song Nights Like This, listen to it. And you won't understand that question. How are you able to tap into so many different auras? Um, I have, I have. Well, first of all, I have a very uh, eclectic taste when it comes to what I listen to. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I, you know what I mean. As far as hip hop, there's all different types of hip hop that I listen to. That's number one. So it gives me a more of a well-rounded understanding of what fans want to hear. You understand what I'm saying? That's yeah. number one. And then um, that rec that record in particular, it came from it came from me just me dropping just hardcore after hardcore after hardcore after, you know, what I'm saying bars, 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 bars. You know, what I'm saying nothing but boom bap and me looking at my catalog and just being like, damn, like, are you ever happy? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Are you ever do you ever go out and have a good time? Do you ever? do things that normal people do, you know what I'm saying? And I just, it, you know, I just wanted a, 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 a accurate representation of who I am. And that's really what the whole album Jigonometry is about. It's really me giving you like, okay, you know, I can rhyme, you know, I get busy, you know what I'm saying? But this is, did you know I was a dad? Did you know I was, did you know I was a husband? Did you know that, you know what I'm saying? Did you know that I feel this way about this and I, and I, and I, I'm into this, you know what I'm saying? That's where really what that whole Show album of hands for anybody out there watching this that needs a dope ass nighttime song to ride to the club to <laughs> nights like this telling you. Pop yeah. that in when you get in the whip. Oh my, it's the perfect riding to the club song, yo. It's just, I was I was a little bit surprised when I heard it. I'm like, damn, it's a whole nother. 
yet again another style from this guy styles upon styles as they say the new album the madness mm -hmm. what are you trying to say with this project the madness um man so many different things man um you know first of all shout out to bp man i think he really captured what i was what i wanted to put across you know um just my feelings on certain things of, you know, if you listen to fear, to fear of God, I speak about how I feel like I'm underrated. And, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of, there's a lot of artists that couldn't tie my shoes that get crazy, that get way more light than I do. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm just being, I'm just keeping it a thousand. Shit, you know though. What I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I definitely, and I, and I know, you know what I'm saying? And I speak about that on, because I feel like um, when it comes to underground hip hop, I feel like we, they like, you know, the idea is that it's supposed to be more pure. It's supposed to be talent based. It's supposed to be, you know, a lot. The politics aren't supposed to be there, but this shit is, I've, I've been in that mainstream world before with records like nights like this and, and, uh, and every day and things like that and other stuff I've been featured on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've been in that world before underground hip hop is just as superficial as mainstream hip hop. Tell me about it. Yeah. It's all about what you got. It's all about it's all it's all about who you know. It's all about what you're gonna spend on your project, on your on your you know what I'm saying, on your music when you put it out. I'm just keeping it a hundred. So you know, this is me expressing these ideas to people that you don't hear. I'm I'm always looking to say to say and bring viewpoints that you're not gonna hear from anybody else. Nobody else is gonna tell you that hip hop, that hip underground hip hop is just as superficial as mainstream hip hop. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's yeah. but but that but that's really but 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 that's really the truth. I mean, for me, it is. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm quite sure other artists feel like this too, but they just don't want to say anything because they don't know who it's going to make upset. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? So, but um, you really don't you care. Know. That's what I know. Yeah, I see you in a couple of other interviews. You say what you feel. Let me ask you what's up with the cover. Is that a reference to the old school educational video called Reefer Madness? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> yes, it is. You did your homework. <laughs> you know what? I'm looking at the cover and I always remember the reference, the refer. Yeah. I'm looking at everything that's going on on the cover and I'm like, is he yeah. is this refer madness? So, I mean, so I mean as far as the the project, you know what I'm saying? This is again me just um me definitely getting back to the basics, you know what I'm saying with this. You know what I'm saying? It's just hard beats and hard rhymes all the way through. You know what I'm saying? I think I think the people needed that. I just gave you uh, a jigonometry which is a little bit more eclectic. Yeah. But I never but I never want to turn my back on those fans that just want to see me rip it every time yeah. you know what i'm saying and yeah. i and i have you know what i'm saying I, I jump i jump at the chance to do that because i'm blessed to have this gift you understand what i'm saying let me um, ask you this this this, this it, 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 it sounds like a deep focus on boom bap on steroids right yeah. is what this album feels like and what was the convo like with you and the producer when y'all went in so all right so me and so so me and bp we got introduced uh 2016 Diabolic actually introduced us to each other. Okay. Right? Shout out to my homie Diabolic. Um, so he introduced us. We had said we were gonna work. We did a couple of Lucy's here and there over the years, but never nothing, nothing extensive. Um late last year, late last year, BP reaches out to me like, yo, I think we should do something. He was in between projects, you know, he's been working with Razcast and RJ Payne and uh, uh, Tragedy Gaddafi and Nature and all these people, all these legends, you know what I'm saying? He's yeah. been working with them. Um, you know, I had got a, actually got a chance to work with him again in 2016 on uh, Nature's album, Target Practice, mm -hmm. you know, featured on that first single on that, on that project, you know what I mean? And um, I got to work with him and then again, but when he reached out to me la late last year, he was like, yo, I think we just need to do something. He's like, I've been watching what you've been doing and you see what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? I think he's like, I think we could really do something classic. And, you know, to be honest with you, I hear that from producers every other day. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but the prior relationship and the working relationship that I had with him is what made me say, okay, let's, let's give it a shot. Right. I, I heard that you was, um, about to be, I hope I'm not cutting your story out, but I, you talk about producers. Mm -hmm. I heard that you're about to be working with my man, Big French, too. I heard. Oh, that. man, listen, that's late breaking news. That's like, right? Yo, news travel fast, don't it? <laughs> I'm a journalist, bro. That's my yo, job. Shout out, Big, yo, shout out to Big French. We already got a record together that's crazy that I just been sitting on because I love it that much. Yeah. And I want to make sure that it's the right time for people to get it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So shout out to Big French. But, um, but yeah, I had, um, so finally, so I took a flight to New York. 
You know what I'm saying? And uh, maybe I would say like we we work for two days straight, like no sleep, no nothing. We just work for two days straight. And when I got there, and when I was, and when and when the two days was over, the the madness was finished. You know what I'm saying? Forty eight hours straight, y'all stayed up. 40, 48 hours straight. I, um, he had sent me a pack of beats, so I think I may have wrote like maybe three of those songs, four of those songs ahead of time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then when I got in there, everything else, everything else is written on the spot. You know what I'm saying? And and we just we powered through it. And then we took the next day and we shot videos. We slept and then we took the next day and we shot videos and the next two days shooting videos. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? So I got to, you know, sometimes I do a rapid fire in my interviews. Mm-hmm. And so this is my rapid fire section. I think we'll see if it we'll see how rapid fire it is. Um, and you, you got to think on your feet. We shouldn't be no problem for you. Um, you make a reference to Lou Albano on this new album. What music yeah. video did he famously make a cameo in in 1983? Papa Don't Preach. Was he? Uh, Madonna. Was he? I don't was think it a, was. Was he? Yeah, hey, I think it was Papa Don't Preach. It, uh I'm pretty sure, yeah, because this, she play, he played he played Madonna's father in that video. One okay, of those videos. Let's say this: he, he played, played a fa- he played somebody else's father in another video. Then, so Cindy Lauper too. Was he? He was Cindy Lauper. It was Cindy Lauper. It was Cindy Lauper. But I could have swore he was in. I I, I could have swore. Yeah, I, if you go look up, oh, I, I could have swore he was in he a Madonna was in video. Papa don't preach back in the day. Yeah. And he played. Yeah, he played her father. He probably because I I, re, I seem to remember a scene in the beginning where she's like he's yelling at her and she runs to go to be with somebody or something like that. Okay, so I'm a, my, my people in the comments to do the research. On yeah, this yeah, too. yeah, yeah. They gonna Did let you, they gonna let it know, let it be known. Did you see the the, the Cassidy and the, the Hitman Holler video where they was I, what it, the over there beefing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your take on that whole thing? I think I think that Cassidy made him look like a complete buffoon. I'll be honest, I think Cassidy was playing chess, bro. That's and what I, believe, I thought. And I, and I believe him when he says, I had I got different type of niggas in here. I believe that too. And I think that if 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 it really got goofy, you know what I'm saying? In there, <laughs> it would, you know what I mean? It would have been an issue. It, I think, I think it would have been a real issue. But I but I definitely I would I would like to say bravo to Cassidy because he played that so well. And then I heard, what I thought, and then I haven't seen the battle yet, but niggas are saying he like won, like. Like he won. I've heard that he. I, I've heard that. I've heard on both sides. I'm sorry. I've seen some people say Hitman. Yeah, won. but but usually when people battle Cassidy, is he lost? Everybody yeah. unanimously will say that he. The first two battles Cassidy had, everybody said, "Yo, he unanimously he lost." Yeah. yeah. This one, it's like 50-50. So that's that's to me that's a loss for a professional battle rapper. I, I don't thought know. that. I, I really thought that by the time. When I saw the worm turn on Hitman, and as I was watching Cassidy more, I said, "Oh, he just gonna keep playing with this guy because he wasn't. He was staying calm most of the time, and dude was Hitman was kind of like wilding out, and he would he would say stuff. He would he would veer the conversation quick, and then Hitman would just bite that apple. Every yeah, he'd be like time. he'd be like yo, he'd be like yo, you ain't as tough as me." <laughs> Yo, <laughs> he was like he would just say anything, and and, and he and he fell for every single every he one for of every them. single trap. And then he, he, made and him then he took it to that next level where he was like, uh, you know, grab me up now. Then I'm like, yo, yo. He's like, you do it, you do it, you do it to me now, and see what happened. I'm yeah. like, yo. So that was it. I just want to know what your thoughts. Me and you yeah, had the same yeah, exact man. thoughts about that. Your favorite yeah. hip hop memory that does not involve you. Favorite hip hop memory that does not involve me. Um, I remember being. There's a couple, man. There's a couple. I remember. I'm. I'm I take you back because, and I, and I think this would be the most important because it stuck with me the longest. Uh, 1989, 1990, something like that. Yeah. Um, I got. Shout out to my cousin Tweety, my cousin Justo, my cousin Sean. They live in New Rochelle. They live in New Rochelle in the projects called The Hollow, right? So I used to go, it's on Main Street. I don't know if they still call it The Hollow. They probably do. But I but I used to go and hang, I used to go and hang with them on the weekend when I was younger. You know what I'm saying? My mother, 
Your father mother was sitting. Oh, there, there you go. Go ahead. Yeah. I used to I used to go visit them, visit them on the weekend. My mother used to take me up there and I spend the weekend with them. And um I remember, and you know, anybody that ever lived in the projects, you know, that you don't pay like you don't like back, I know at that time you didn't pay like electric bill or you know, it's you just paid your rent and that was it. You know what I'm saying? I know at least it was that way there, right? So um I remember like my mother, she would never let me like leave the TV on overnight because she was paying that bill. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yep. We live, you know, we didn't live in the projects, right? Right. But over there, I used to love going there because I could just fall asleep with the TV on and they would let it rock. Yeah. They wouldn't say nobody would say nothing. So one morning I woke up. I never forget one morning I woke up on a Saturday morning. And I can't totally remember if it was Rap City or if it was your own TV raps, but it was the Ju- the symphony, Juice Crew Symphony video was playing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I just w- I woke up to it. You know, you know what I'm saying? And that that re- that that stayed tattooed in my brain forever like that just the image of these dudes with this cowboy western stuff on and the beat and the flow and the ferocity of every single MC that touches oh the, that's the mic on that and just seeing Molly Ma on the piano and just everything about it just really spoke it just spoke to me in a different way. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I just knew that this was something that I had to like be a part of. You know what I'm saying? Symphony is way up there for me too. I mean, of course, yeah. I mean, I don't know that you could officially say that there is a better posse cut still to the I mean, there's some there's some challengers out there. Yeah, but, yeah, there is. Uh, but the but the symphony still, like the collection yeah. of MCs and what they did with those bars. Mm-hmm. Lethal. I mean, Big Daddy Kane, Cool G yeah. Rap. Master Ace, Craig J. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It really doesn't get, and you know, and obviously full cir- full full circle to uh Jigonometry. I got Craig G on 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 Bill Cosby too. Mm-hmm. That's because I remembered that. And he was, you know what I'm saying? And he was tangible. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. you know, that that's that this is I and and I definitely have a couple of more memories, but that's probably the most important. And I just say that because it stuck with me for 30 years. You know what I'm saying? Um, what's your favorite black exploitation flick? Because I happen to know you're a fan of black exploitation. Um, yeah, big fan of black exploitation. I'm gonna say, um, I like I, I mean Superfly was dope, you know what I'm saying? Love Superfly, all the Dolomite stuff. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All the all the Dolomite stuff. I'm trying to think. Um and uh coffee. Oh, okay, yeah. Now what coffee. kind of watch is that in the video for? It's like that. Uh, uh it's like that. What kind of watch did I have on? Was it that one you got on right now? You're a watch guy, I noticed. Yeah, 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 definitely. I think it might have been a um I got a couple. I'm trying to think. That one right there. That might have just been like a little, like a little citizen or something like that. It was nothing crazy. What you got on right now? I mean, I mean the goal, the I mean the goal was real. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah. But, you know what I mean? Um, this is August Steiner right here. Yeah, I mean it must be too expensive for me. I don't know nothing about it. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Can I hold something though? <laughs> 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 I just need enough for. I don't go plays, too. Bro. I try. My wife, my wife be on me about the spending and shit. So I really don't go too crazy. I, I would rather instead of having just one like super expensive watch, I would buy a whole bunch of less expensive watches so that I can switch it up when I want to. That's you know what I'm smart. Saying? That's smart. Um, so th- I'm I'm done with the rapid fire part. But so now gimmicks are noticeably absent from your work. No gimmicks yes. in what you nah. do. Um, it's like a purposeful avoidance of it. And you alluded to that earlier. What is, why is it so important for you to be unapologetically hip hop and not even borrowing from what's super popping on the underground? Um, I don't know, man. I just, I just come from a class where that shit wasn't okay, man. And it wasn't respected. You know what I'm saying? I come from a time when you you would get you gonna get called out for that shit. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? For trying to sound like him, him, and him. Like that just wasn't, you know what I'm saying? And I and I just I kept those principles with me. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not and out here not, like trying to, oh, make me a beat that sound like Derringer. That's not you. 
yeah, nah, absolutely not. You know, if I happen to pick something that's along those lines, then that's just is what it is. But I really, and, and, you know, I just really, I just never wanted to follow anybody else's path. You know what I'm saying? Like this is, I've gotten where I've gotten by listening to me and those people that I put around me, you know what I'm saying? So I really don't go too far out of that. You know what I'm saying? The only person that could probably make me do a record that I really wasn't thinking about doing or whatever the case is, is probably my manager because I've listened to him before and it's worked. You know what I'm saying? He might be like, yo, I think you should do this. You need to get on this. You know uh, what I'm saying? Uh, uh, somebody said a long time ago, I forget who said it. I, I, I came to the fork in a row and I took the path less travel and that made all the difference in the world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and and to be honest with you, the artists, a lot of the artists that I respect, that I respect, they've done that, right? So one of my favorite artists is Freddie. One of my favorite rappers is Freddie Gibbs, mm. right? Yeah. Freddie Gibbs, Freddie Gibbs had a big major record label contract in the Scope Records That's when he cool. first, yep. came, first came into the game. He was one of the freshman 10. You know what I'm saying? He, he, I mean, anybody, normal, most people would say he had the whole shit laid out for him. He really just had to make a make some some stupid songs like everybody else. Yeah, yeah, right. That wasn't what he wanted to do. You know, he was from Gary, Indiana, but he was still going to link up with Static Selector to do records, and he was, you know, working with uh, uh, Mad Lib and who or whoever else, all type different types of New York producers and things yeah. like that. He chose his own path. Then he got he got another shot with Jeezy, right? He could have, he could have, he could have, he could have went and did, he could have just went and did whatever Jeezy was doing and rode off into the sunset. But no, he wanted to do his, he wanted to make his own style of music. Mm -hmm. Fast yeah. forward to 2020, he's nominated for a Grammy from following his own pathway. That's right. Gems you right know? there. Gems. Um, the video for Classy Dons. Mm -hmm. First of all, is Rockwell's and you mm -hmm. produced by Static Selector. Yep. Um, Whose idea was that for the illustrated video? Um, I think that that was definitely Rockwell's I, um, idea. That was like around the time when I had first moved down to Atlanta, so it kind of just made sense to, you know, what I'm saying to 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 do to to do that, and we just had to like kind of go out and search for the right artists to do it. I knew that the single was important for Rockwell's, you know, what I'm saying him establishing himself as a solo artist. So, and I and I wanted to make sure that he got the proper look so we searched for the he's right dope. he's dope the, yeah yeah the right artist and every and just everything about it you know what i'm saying um and you know i'm very happy with how that came out and all the love i mean that record still gets a lot of airplay today you know what i'm dope. saying dope record dope video man come on now yeah. um i saw a joint from 2017 mm -hmm. you featured on the cut with pmd of epmd fame first yeah. of all the joint is called spirit and it's mm -hmm. fire. You got, write yeah. these down. Join is called Spirit. Yeah. Um, real hip hop shit, which is nothing new for you. Um, what's your relationship with PMD? Um, definitely like like I would look at him as like definitely a mentor. You know what I'm saying? Um, I introduced to um PMD like about 2016. Um, I was back. I happened to be backstage. I was backstage at Foxwoods arena um and you know i went we went we me and my manager we went into their dressing room and they just started to like this is when i found i had first started like making a little bit of noise and him and eric was back there you know what i'm saying and mm -hmm. they 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 sat they they literally they you know they took time out they took time they was about to go on stage it took about 15 minutes of their time and just sat me down it was like just dropping all these amazing jewels on me and stuff you know what i'm saying Wow. And you know me, I, you know, I'm a hip hop kid. I grew up in this shit. So I'm looking like, yo, this is fucking EPMD, bro. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like this is. This it's is, you guys to chill. It's all. It's fucking. Yeah, it's just. It was. It was. And that, and that was like really a big deal for me. Drop some jewels on. They drop some jewels on me. Then I'll. Then I, you know, then it's like, all right, we're making our way to the stage. I got to sit backstage and just watch them go crazy up there. And they had, I don't know how many people that arena holds, but it's probably at least 10,000 people. And they got 10,000 people and they're going absolutely nuts. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that really did a lot for me as far as like just my over, just the way I looked at things. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, fast forward to being able to work with PMD, um, 
I had told this story a couple of times before, but um, the day that we recorded that record, my manager didn't tell me what we were going to go do. He just said, yo, be ready this time. Come pick you up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We get to we get to a studio and I walk in the studio and uh, Charlie Murata and PMD are sitting there. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, there's a little bit of conversation and then the beat comes on. The beat comes on and it's like, okay, we need you. We need this done in like 15, 20 minutes or you got 30 minutes to get this completed. And I sat there and I wrote the verse of my life. And I went and, and, you know, everything else is history. And I got to, you know, because of those, you know, because of that relationship and because of PMD being, you know, so gracious, you know what I'm saying? I got, I got to go to um, Sway in the Morning Mm. I got to go to real late with Peter Rosenberg um, and just a ton of other stuff. You know, I got to go on the road and perform and do then do a bunch of spot dates with um, PMD and just open up for him. And then he would give me like, you know, we, we me, me and RJ, we got the we were, you know, we were his hype men. But then he would allow each of us, give each of us like five minutes to do our thing and perform my latest single or whatever. And this is I'm getting put on a major scale now you know these guys when you know these guys when they get booked they have writers and you know you walk in into the green room in the back and there's all types of gourmet food cooked and all this crazy you know i'm not used to that you know what i'm saying yeah i'm used to it now you know what i'm saying but at that time i'm not it's it you know it's the same it's a whole nother world you know what i'm saying shout out to epmd though godly shout out to epmd constantly been giving back to long island over and over and over again you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Much respect. Much respect. And I came up on them. I mean, it, it was it was when I, you know, I'm not gonna say what my age is, but it was nothing cooler when I was in a certain grade uh than APMD. And we used to race home after school to watch whatever video that they had dropping because they was everything. And I seen them in concert twice. Um, mm-hmm. was worth every penny. Um yeah. in your mind, before you cook up if, before you cook up with, with a guy like uh, PMD for the first time. What's going through your mind as you prepare to work alongside a legit legend? Um, just like you know, he's gonna tell me. He's gonna he's gonna let you know if your shit if the shit's whack. If it's not what he's looking for, he's gonna be honest about it. He's gonna let you know. So you just you just don't want to go that. You just don't want to go that way. But I remember at, before I started putting. I remember as I was putting the rhyme together, he was, he, PMD speaks in codes. He speaks in riddles. He speaks in almost like, rhyme, like I understand now, and like he, when he speaks, it's on, he's almost giving it to, delivering it to you like a rhyme, mm-hmm. like the conversation, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He, you know what I'm saying? He's gonna, he uses a lot of analogies and, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Analogies and just uh, metaphors mm-hmm. in his speech. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, and he really, he said some things to me that kind of just got my, my gears grinding. You know what I'm saying? And it really pushed me through that verse. And then when I went in there and did it, um, they were like, they were like, yes, yeah, this is yeah, what, yeah. This is what and you, and you did, and, and listen, you and everybody else committed murder on that joint, but you were dead ass serious. You wasn't playing. Like Absolutely. I noticed that when you was on that cut, I, I listened to it and I'm like, I want to see what he does. You know what I mean? Next to a guy yeah. like PMD. And I was very happy that I could hear the focus. I mean, you 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 drop bar, that's what you do. Like it's not mm-hmm. new for you, but you definitely and the other dudes that was on that cut, they handled their business on there too, but you made sure that you stood out on it. I appreciated that. Um Yeah. Now that was important. That was a that was a big step for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you got a song called Self Made. Yeah. A lot of people use the phrase to describe themselves. What does self-made mean to you? So basically, that's, you know, that's really one of my most, imp- one of the songs that I have that's the most important to me. I mean, self-made is really like, it's honestly like when you, when you're one of these people like me who grew up having a dream, right? Um there, you know, there'll be people, there, there, there are always going to be people who are, whether they're close to you or whatever, that they're just not, they're not going to understand yeah. how you, they're just not going to get it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's not that they don't love you or that they don't believe in you. It's just that that's your dream. So 
you can't expect somebody who's not musically talented at all to understand why you would stay in the studio for two days straight and not go to sleep and not do nothing. You can't understand some, you can't expect someone to understand that. You can't under, expect someone to understand why you would, you would, uh, you know, give up your home life and go on the road for months, months on end. You know what I'm saying? Just to do, you know, just to go perform or go on tour or whatever you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, this song was basically just about keeping focus and 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 staying staying focused on that common goal you know what i'm saying that you that you want and and basically about having tunnel vision and not seeing anything but what you need mm. um i say this i say this all the time in order to make it in this rap game you got to be just a little bit crazy and just a t- just a tiny bit self-centered just a little bit because if because if you're not because if you're not then you're gonna quit yeah yeah you know um interestingly enough you are an advocate for excuse me bridging the gap between trap music and what a guy like me would call more traditional or real hip-hop for a mm-hmm. lyricist um people might be surprised to hear you give drill and trap so much leeway explain the philosophy i just my main thing is I just feel like the separatism, I feel like it hurts us more than it helps us. Mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like hip hop will be respected or as a co- hip hop or rap music, whatever you want to call it, will be respected a lot more as a culture if they didn't see old old people, uh, older people and youngsters fighting within. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I think I think when I think when the old heads publicly, publicly. Down. Now, uh, to be, I, I got ears just like anybody else. Yeah, yeah. There's some straight up trash out here. I, yeah. I would never, I would never deny that. But mm-hmm. there's always been straight up trash mm-hmm. out here. That's yeah. number one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I didn't hear everybody being quite so vocal about that because there's always been dudes who couldn't rap that good. There's always been dudes who pick corny beats, and you know, you understand what I'm saying, right? Mm-hmm. Now. The, now these youngsters, I don't agree with all of it. I don't agree with the lifestyle. I don't agree with all. Of, but you have a lot of, especially like like a lot of dudes, older dudes or older heads from New York or the Northeast that would just be like, "Yo, anything that's not boom bap is not hip hop," and that's just not true. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? And, right. And that's and that's the whole thing. You have to everybody. You know, hip hop. Everybody, everybody is gonna give you their version of it. If I'm from, if, if I'm from Al, if I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, what do I look like sounding like Rakim on a track? Mm-hmm. That's right. not authentic. Right. That's not authentic. I my agree. beats ain't gonna sound the same, and my rhymes ain't gonna sound the same. And just because, just because it doesn't, doesn't mean that I'm not hip hop. That's true. You're, I and I and. I grant you that. And I yeah, I heard you say that somewhere else. I was it started to make me think a little bit different. But listen, if a guy does come out with a song and he's like, if the chorus is I pop Molly and he says that 84 times in, in the chorus, <laughs> that's not nah, nah, that that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. not to me, that's, that's not that's yeah. that, that's not okay. You know what I'm saying? To me, yeah. that's not okay. Yeah. But I but what I, but all I'm saying is everything just because it's not boom bap doesn't mean that it's not hip-hop or it's not authentic that's just that man's representation of what was going on in his neighborhood you understand what i'm saying yeah yeah. now look now now you know what i'm saying now um i don't know to me that to me that and to me that's just that's just very logical you know what i'm saying i like i like i said i feel like it's when 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 we're when we're bickering back and forth even when the when the young cats when they got something to say about old niggas or whatever the case is you know what i'm saying when 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 outside forces see that it's like that's exactly what they want because as long as we're doing that we're not focusing on ownership of this culture that we created Good point. As long as as long as we beef in and oh, that's not hip hop and that's not, it doesn't matter. Everybody's making money. Even if you don't like what uh young so and so or little so and so is doing, he's making a shitload of money. He's making a shitload of money that could be beneficial to this culture. But y'all gotta learn how to show each other love. But I know Kid Cuddy just had on the fucking dress on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, I, that, I, don't, I don't. That, that's what I I'm saying. I don't. I don't, <laughs> don't agree do. with that. Yeah, yeah. I don't agree with that. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I don't I, like. Yeah. I don't like some. But 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 but, but we'll see what people don't want to talk about is a lot of these this imagery and stuff that you see. This uh, you know, a lot of this feminine energy you see in hip hop from males, right? 
a lot of that would not be necessary if we had taken ownership of this culture years ago. See, a lot of the old heads, they want to talk about, oh, well, you didn't, well, well, you know, this is not what we created this for and yada, yada, yada. Well, then, then how could, then, then, then y'all should have bossed up and these young cats should be answering to you mm-hmm. instead of this white man that's telling him that you mm-hmm. got to do this and you got to mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. If you, if you, if, if, if we had bossed up in the beginning and I obviously, I know hindsight is twenty twenty, yeah. right? Yeah. But, but if we had bossed up in the beginning, Right. Then we then 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 when so little so and so wants a record deal, he doesn't have to do all of that goofy shit to get a record deal because because you and me are yeah. the ones that signing the checks. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? And yeah. we can keep and that's how that's how you don't get you. We're not going to make hip hop pure by talking down to these kids because they are making more money than you. Why would they listen to you? Mm. Right. Yeah. That's number one. They, why would they listen to you? The way that we make hip hop pure is by taking ownership, and then then we can control it and get rid of all of that. Good that, and that also nonsense. let me interject too. It's also up to the fucking parents because I raised my fucking kid on good music, so I don't listen to no garbage, my son. And yeah. that's what we got to do, it. and we got to keep passing it down generation to generation. You know what I mean? Because yeah, my yeah, house, yeah. you wasn't allowed to listen to the to garbage, but. Before my son even knew garbage existed, when my son was seven years old. He's already listening to Tupac. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like before before they could even indoctrinate him with the goofiness, he getting indoctrinated from somebody with golden ears. Exactly. Um, so it, that's that's my that's my take. That's my take on it. Of course, everything everything that comes out from the younger generation is not dope, and it's not what we want in our culture. I I get that. Yeah. But but. It's, but but at the same time, but at the same time, we, the older generation, they got to take responsibility for not setting up a better pathway for these kids. Absolutely. Because right now it's wild, wild west. Yeah. And it has to be that way because we don't control it. Did you open for Faith Evans? Faith Evans? No, not Faith Evans. Did nah. you open for an R&B female singer? Yeah, Keisha Cole. Keisha Cole, okay. So wh- when was this? And... and- and, um, hi, hi, Keisha. Whoa, <laughs> you shooting your shot. So, Let me stop. Show, I'm just in the middle with this. Is she back here? Oh, okay. <laughs> what she? What building she live in? This one? Yeah. Right, right up there, sixth floor, right over there. <laughs> Keisha, hey Keisha. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I did. Yo, it's crazy too. I actually had a conversation with Keisha Cole too. I tried to holler and she was kind of eating it up. I ain't gonna lie. I would not lie, bro. I would not lie at all. This is 2000. This is way before my wife. 2006, maybe. Something like a, that. You had a shot. I had a shot. Yeah, because um, we had actually opened up for, um, shout out to Mike Green. He's a big concert promoter um, on, on, from Long Island. His little brother, Mark, is actually in the Four Now Five Boys. And he used to give us looks he used to throw these big cons like he's the first person ever bring jay-z to long island um nelly brought to long island like this is whenever whoever's hot this particular show was like dmx and um i think it might have been i think it might have been like uh joel santana keisha cole something like that this particular show we got to open up we got to open up for them mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying the brother put us on let us open up and we had a dressing room backstage at nassau coliseum and i'm standing there i'm out I'm, I'm standing back there she walks by i'm like you know what i'm the shit too okay now. you know what i'm saying yeah and i you know i started spitting my little rap at her and she was like kind of eating it up laughing shit like that and then her crew you know she had like a whole entourage You're like yo we have to go da, 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 da. so it i didn't get to finish but i it, it was very, it, it was very promising what was happening there. So look, I and I like that story. And so check this. Yeah. So, you know, I, I I don't steal from nobody, but I will steal this from Jesus and Meryl because they always have like they have a, the, the saying up at the top. I think yours should say, "I almost bagged Keisha." Oh my, yeah, almost. Can we almost. put that up there? I was yo, I was close. I ended up bag, I ended up bagging something else crazy that night too. Something because I was on a I must have been on a roll. I was just on Man, a roll. You had something that, not famous, but it was exotic. Yeah, yeah, because you know you win some, you lose some. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I bagged something ratchet, something ratchet that night. Oh, that, that's the that's the best though. That's the best. <laughs> yeah. Wait, now we gonna put I bagged some ratchet instead. <laughs> Yo, so what's next for John Jiggs though? 
Um, so the next thing, the next thing you're gonna get from me is Twin Cannons Two. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Twin Cannons Two. Yes. Uh, shout out to my brother K Slugger. Uh, anybody that's been following me knows that the Twin Cannons first project is like this. What blew the doors off for me. Yeah. As far as like the underground hip hop scene, this is my first um, overseas. This is my first international look. This mm. is my first. This is my first vinyl deal. This is my first international tour. You know what I'm saying? All of this happened from Twin Cannons. You know what I'm saying? This is the first time I really started earning money off of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where I could be like, yo, the dude, I actually, you know what I'm saying? When's that coming out? Um, June. Okay. June. Okay. And as we as we end this interview, here's the thing. Like, as full disclosure, you know, I communicate behind us. You know, I'm busy. Mr. Jiggs here is very busy, but we communicate through DMs all the time. And I just, you know, I said this on my um my, the front page of my IG, so I should say it now. Just good guy, uh, great family man, mm-hmm. great father. So I, I we talk about the music, we put that all out. Let, let's let's talk about what what's the the really important thing here. Um, and I just want to make sure that I relay that to my people. We you're looking at a good guy right now, not not just an incredible spitter, a good human being. Um, mm-hmm. And so thank you, John Jigs, for being on the show. I'm going to do something mm-hmm. right now. I appreciate you. Something I never did. I'm advising people to go click this video over here. <laughs> this might be over <laughs> your face right now. <laughs> <laughs> we in the, we, uh, so go click these videos over here. And then I'm about to, I think I'm going to cook steak right now because my girl going to be mad if I don't. What you going to eat? Um, I actually, I barbecued up a storm yesterday. Mm. So I think, and you know how the barbecue be like, it's good the next day, but like the day after, after that, you might yeah. not want it no more. So I think, so I'm about to probably do a leftover barbecue from yesterday tonight, because I know after this it's probably going to get thrown out. And my wife made some, the macaroni salad, bro, the level of treachery in this macaroni, macaroni salad, dog. Yeah. It was like, I mean, she put the tuna in it and the onions and the salad. Oh my, yo. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting Yo. really hungry right now. So y'all go click this video over here. <laughs> Thank you for connecting with me. Go connect with each other. I'm Mike Powers. I'm out. Peace.